hello everyone in this video we are going to see about the design model so let us see what are the two different dimensions of design model vertical and horizontal so here as the direction says the it is an vertical or horizontal the horizontal process dimension indicates the evolution of the parts of the design model as each design task is executed so here once you start defining the design of any software process software development process we can design those either in the vertical or in the horizontal fashion what is horizontal is we can elaborate on all the task at a stretch that is called as an horizontal that means suppose we are having a 10 task for a particular uh, process and they, each task is uh, executed one after the other that is called as an horizontal design and what is vertical design is the abstraction dimension represents the level of detail as each element of the analysis model is transformed into the design model and then iteratively refined here in the vertical dimension once a particular task is taken and that task which is earlier it was in the analysis model not now converted into a design model design now here this design is iteratively refined level by level until a final conclusion is done about the particular part of the design model that means it goes vertical so you take one task refine it until we can where we can get the further product which cannot be refined that is the concept of the vertical model so horizontal model we just to go by all the tasks one by one without getting into detail but in the case of vertical model we just get into detail for each and every part of the model next one is elements of the design model use many of the same uml diagrams used in the analysis model so UML is unified modeling language it is a tool by which we can model the design elements the diagrams are refined and elaborated as part of the design more implementation specific detail is provided emphasis is placed on architectural structure and the style interfaces between the components and the outside world so this is the way the components are built components that reside within the architecture so now these are all the substeps of the second step here the elements of the design model uses many of the uml diagrams so these diagrams are refined and elaborated as a part of the design so once you take the uml diagram to specify the design these diagrams are refined that means they are further improved till it gets into a good design model more implementation specific and they actually we are always specifying the implementation specific detail also in this phase that means how it is going to be implemented what are all the phases that helps to implement those model and then emphasis is placed on the architectural structure and the style so how it is going to place in the framework of the model that is the architecture and what style is going to be used in developing the particular component and then interfaces between the components and the outside world that means there are as i have already seen it is developed in modules and each model has well defined functionality so these are all the components and how the components are going to communicate among one another and also within the outside world with the outside world next one is the components that reside within the architecture so these are all the things which are defined using using the design model and now the design model elements are not always developed in a sequential fashion what does it mean is we have cannot just keep on develop the models elements in a sequential fashion because once you develop a particular model in the preliminary stage and then we have to get into details of some details where we can set the communication between the model of the nearing models as well as the interface design so they go in parallel okay that means once you design a part of the model which is a component we cannot just keep on 
defining the or refining the same component again and again rather than we also find out how this component is going to interact with the neighboring component that is the parallel execution of this interface between the different models modules the design model has the following layered elements so what are all the classes as same as that model is also there so data class design architectural design interface design and as well as the component level design and finally we have the deployment level design so here these are all the classes so we have data that is all about the functionality that is data that's what data is going to use what is data structure all those things comes under the data class design and architecture gives the framework of how the components is going to be placed among the inside the framework and what is the interface that components is going to communicate with one another how many communication lines are possible and when they communicate and what they communicate all these things are done in the interface design and then the component level design how the components are developed and then finally how the deployment is going to done in the particular phase that may be in the user machine or in the some other level that is the deployment level design so there are some design elements they are the data class design this creates a model of the data and the objects that is represented at a high level of abstraction and then architectural design that gives about the framework of the overall layout of the software and the interface design which helps to test the information flow between the components and also the in and out of the system and this includes the user interface external interface as well as the internal interfaces actually what is the interface internal is between the components how they are going to communicate external interfaces how it is going to communicate with the outside machine and what is user interfaces how the user is going to use and how, what is the type of the input the user is going to give and how he is going to interact with the machine that is the user interface and next one is component level design elements where we have the it describes the internal detail of each software component by way of data structure definitions algorithms and the interface specifications so here all the definition of the concept the algorithms is going to use and the interface specification in the sense actually interface is just the what is the communication between the components and also between the components and the machine or the outside world and what the interface specification is how the interface is going to happen and what is the component of the interface specification so that is done in this component level design and the deployment level design elements in deployment level design elements it indicates how the software functionality and the subsystems will be allocated with the physical computing environment that will support the software and now here there are some uh, pattern based software design so we can develop some patterns what are patterns patterns are the templates on which the soft the product can be built and these patterns they can also derive further furthermore patterns so that some patterns are this mature engineering disciplines make use of thousands of design patterns for such things like buildings highways electrical circuits factories weapon systems vehicles and the computer so naturally in all the engineering disciplines we have the patterns they form the templates on which we can build the component and some examples are given such as the highways electrical circuits and so on design patterns also have as a purpose of in software engineering so how in normal engineering the templates for base uh, plays an important role same way in software engineering also the design patterns play an important role and architectural patterns this define the overall structure of the software this indicates the relationship between the among the subsystem as well as the between the software components and defines the rules for specifying the relationships among the software elements and the design patterns address a specific element of the design such as aggregation of the components or solve some design problem relationships among the components or the mechanisms for affecting the inter component communication so these design patterns just uh, explains on how the communications or the relationships happen between the different components and what is the mechanism on which it is going to communicate between the components 
and is consists of creational structural and the behavioral patterns so how it is going to create that is the template or the format and how the structure is going to be built that means the relationship between the components and how the behaviors once it is implemented how it is going to behave that's also have some patterns or the templates then coding patterns this coding patterns describe the language specific patterns and implement the algorithmic or data structure element of a component so earlier we have developed the component uh, structure there now we are going to in, in this coding patterns we are, this is going to be elaborated based upon the language specific patterns for the for example we have desired some language to develop the particular software now according to accordingly based on this language how the coding has to happen that also has some template on how the coding can proceed and a specific interface protocol so some rule is made what is protocol is a rule so the rule is made how the interface is going to that is the this is also in based upon the coding level how the interface coding is going to happen between the sub components as well as the component and the outside world or a mechanism of communication among the components so now here these are all the patterns on which the design can be implemented and thanks for watching